All right, so the next process we're gonna cover um, are monotypes. Um, so with this one, um, you guys are gonna have access to these A510 piece of plexiglass. Since these are all the same size and thickness, that'll be a little bit easier, more prescriptive because I can just give you guys uh, one press calibration of setting because it should all be the same. Um, so as I said in the introduction, with the monotypes, essentially you're making a one-off print. Okay, so we're using, uh, in this case, the same Speedball uh, super graphic black ink. Um, you can work these either additively or subtractively, so a combination thereof. So with these experimentations, we're really going to be important. Um, it's going to take a little while to kind of figure out the right kind of ratio and mixture of your ink um, to your um, oil medium to solvent to kind of figure out um, how to get the quality marks and the kind of you know value range that you want. So be prepared to you know try and fail. Um, so as I said, it's going to take a little while to kind of figure out. Um, that right kind of mix or ratio to get the results you want out of it. Um, so, as I said, work additives, practice, and combination thereof. Um, and that really is just going to depend, you know, also on the nature of the imagery you're trying to make. So, uh, with this, obviously, you can, you can work more representationally, more illustratively. Um, you can also work uh, more abstractly, or kind of more non objective um, kind of vein. Um, so because this is a plexiglass and it's clear, this gives, gives, uh, gives us the ability to um, position an image underneath the plexiglass and actually use that as a reference. So just bear in mind, if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure that your reference image is flipped or reversed, okay? Um, so a couple ways to do that. One, the most kind of quick, direct way uh, would just be to, if you're drawing these out initially, if you're sketching them out, uh, make sure they're you know, drawn to scale. Um, and then basically on tracing paper, draw it out, flip the tracing paper over, and that, that way it's flipped reverse for you. And then placing that underneath the plexiglass, taping it down to secure it in place. Um, or if you're using uh, photo references, or if you're also using uh, something that you've, you've drawn digitally or something you've scanned in, um, then you could print it out to make sure that you, in Photoshop, flip it, right? So mirror it, uh, and then print it out. So I just have this little demo image of uh, the Crypt Keeper I'm using for this. Um, so I sized it to five by seven, which is um, my paper size. So as I said earlier, um, you don't have to have a border with these. If you want them to be bleed prints, that's totally fine. You can do that. Uh, it does make it a little bit trickier to properly you know, register or align your paper uh, to your image without having a border, but it doesn't have to have one. That's entirely up to you. Um, if you wanna have a border, that's fine as well. Um, so I just printed out my image again. I flipped it, reversed it, and just taped it underneath my plexiglass plate. Um, so this is actually the part that I'm working on. Just have my image underneath it as a reference. And also, um, if it's taped kind of like in this hinge, then I can actually flip my plate up and kind of check all my progress as I'm going to see um, how dark uh, my values are getting or light. Um, uh, one other thing you could do as well, you can kind of see some remnants of that here. Um, if you did have you know, a smaller image, um, or if you wanted to be able to uh, better position your paper, um, you could just measure out and make a mark with a Sharpie on the reverse side of this to be able to help uh, actually place your paper down on top of this. Um, okay, so got a plexiglass. This is actually a quick little practice warm up I did of, a, of the same image, just a little bit, just wasn't cropped as much. Uh, just kind of, you know, get back into it, get the feel for it. Um, and that was all done additively. So I've got a variety of brushes here and I have brushes in the shop you guys can use. Uh, they're just on that back table where we keep all of the, the inks and modifiers. So I've got a variety of brushes. Um, as I said, we're using the same ink we've been using. So this is the uh, Speedball Super Graphic Black. So we're using that same ink. Um, a couple other things that I have here. So we have and this container, which is, it's marked, and there's a larger container of that on the back table. Um, but this is, uh, it's called Galkid. So it is uh, an oil painting medium um, made by Gamblin. And so that's gonna do two things that will really help us out. So one, it's, it has a drying agent, so it'll make this dry faster, uh, which is ultimately beneficial. It's gonna, it's gonna reduce your working time a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, it's gonna, that's gonna be advantageous because since you guys are printing on both the fronts and backs of your paper, um, expediting that drawing process can be helpful. Um, it's also going to um, uh, extend your, your pigment a little bit, so it's gonna make it easier to control, um, and it's gonna be easier to um, uh, kind of brush on, give you better viscosity. 
So I put just a little bit of that gal kid out on my table. Uh, I've got my ink here, and then on this container, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, mineral spirits into that container. So I've got some solvent. So I can use that solvent to dilute my ink as well. So one thing that you could do as you're mixing your ink that can be helpful is if you just have a scrap piece of whatever paper you're using to print on, um, I would just make sure it's the same color as whatever you're using so you get a more kind of accurate representation um, of your values. You can have a little kind of like scrap sheet and just kind of do some tests on it as you're mixing uh, your inks to kind of get a better sense of what values you're going to be approximating. So obviously the more solvent we add to it, the lighter it gets. So the problem if you're using a lot of solvent is that it's going to evaporate really quickly. Um, so what I would generally suggest doing is kind of working uh, from dark to light. Um, also generally, if you have an image like this, where actually there's, there's a background here as well, uh, working from the back to the front. So back to front, dark to light, um, kind of working from general to specific. Um, so the more diluted your pigment gets, as I said, um, it's gonna dry faster, it's gonna evaporate faster. So you kind of wanna hold off and do that stuff closer to the end. So I'm gonna start out by just kind of blocking out some of these big shapes. So this is something where it's gonna require just a little bit of experimentation, a little bit of um, just working with material to get the consistency that you're after. You don't wanna oversaturate it, overload it with the gal kid, um, because then that will start to um, cause the pigment to separate. So if you are using too high a ratio of the gal kid to your pigment, your ink, um, it's going to have a tendency to kind of run and bloom and you're not going to actually get um, a lot of control. So it just takes a little bit of experimentation to kind of get that balance and figure out how much uh, or what the correct ratio, desired ratio um, of your pigment to the gal kid should be. All right, so again, I have uh, damp paper. So basically we're treating this much like we did with the uh, Italian with copper plates. Um, so I have my paper dampened. Um, I have the uh, monotype, added monotype that I just did. Um, and of course that's face up, paper's face down. So we'll do some newsprint and backing like we would ordinarily. 
I typically run these at uh, about 17 over four. We got so it was a little bit on the last one. Uh, I was able to push those darks a little bit more. Um, so yeah, we got a nice range of values, some nice marks. So we get some nice dark darks. Uh, would have been nice to see, you know, some more like mid tones in these areas. Get a little bit of washed out here, uh, but overall it looks pretty good. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is eventually you'll be printing on the, the reverse side of this. So this is, is a book. Um, you have 24 pages of con excuse me, 24 images of content, which will actually be 12 physical pages. So 12 physical pages printed both front and back, so that'd be 24 um, images. So 12 pages front and back. Um, so you kind of want to just go through uh, and print all your fronts first, and then by the time um, you get through those, you can start printing on the reverse side of them. Um, so. When you're done with this, we just clean it off with mineral spirits, paper towel. Um, it is possible to, you know, pull like a ghost print off this and be really light, but you can get something out of it uh, if you wanted to experiment with that. But um, so, yeah, so that's one of our monotypes. So that's using the additive process. So um, just, you know, our printing ink, modify a little bit of gal kid and some mineral spirits to kind of thin it out and make some washes. Um, you do have to be careful with how you're modifying the ink. So if you're using too much gal kid and too much mineral spirits, um, it can cause the ink to bleed more. Also, especially if you're using a lot of mineral spirits, um, it can have more of a tendency to bleed through the back, which I don't see too much of happening right now, maybe a little bit um, up here. But um, if you aren't careful, again, if you're, um, if you're mixing too high of a ratio of mineral spirits to the ink, um, it can bleed through the back of your paper. So you want to be, be aware of that. So it uh, looks pretty good. So we'll take care of the drying rack. Uh, one thing I would suggest too on the rack, um, it's just to put down a piece of newsprint, and that way, since these are smaller pieces of paper, there's less of a likelihood of them falling through the cracks. So you just take a piece of newsprint and place your prints on that, which can then go on the rack. Um, so that way, again, you're less likely to fall through the cracks. So that's the monotypes. Um, so those are that's the second of your two options with the collagraphs. Uh, and the monotypes. So uh, both of them, you know, uh, just experiment, have fun with it, play around, um, and just try out different things and, you know, try to get the best results you can.